Hi, my name is Mako and this is my guide for new Darwin Project players. Darwin Project is highly skill based battle royale slash hunger games type of a game. Newly to the genre, it introduces mechanics like coldness level, show director messing up with the game, map closing down in tiles instead of uh, ever closing circle. Oh, and did I forget to mention, there is no RNG, no randomness whatsoever. Except for the map, randomizing every single game, but that is just a good thing. Now that you know the basics, let's hop into the guide and learn how to survive in this harsh environment. The first thing to learn is of course the map. You should memorize the whole map, the tiles as we call them, the little hexagon things on bottom of your screen in the left corner. Learn the tiles and how to navigate on them and where to find the best loot, boom shroom spots, chest spots, loot piles, everything basically, the teleports, everything. Learn them and you won't get lost in mid-fight. Extra equipment. Always, and I mean always, keep an extra piece of wood and extra collider with you. When you're fighting, you don't have time to harvest wood or leather for a collider, if you're about to die. Even a one piece of wood can save you if you are about to freeze to death. At the end game, you should also try to keep extra materials for an extra armor. Not as necessary if you have health kits though. Also, lava and fire will push your collider upwards. Remember that. Stamina management. All you do consumes stamina. Try never to run out of stamina. Learn how to manage it properly you should always have a bit of stamina left to run away or behind a cover. Never ever run out of stamina, just as I do in this clip. Aiming. Your aim and muscle memory are essential parts of the gameplay. Since there are only two weapons, bow being one of them, you hitting your shots is literally half of the game. Aim and muscle memory comes with time and practice. You can shoot floating metal things in lobby when you look up, and normally playing aggressive can't hurt your aim. Traps. Play with different traps and use traps in different situations. And be aware of traps, they could be anywhere. Traps can be easily seen while standing still or walking slowly, but while running in combat situations, they can be unnoticed. Traps are really, really useful in combat, as you see in this clip. Forbidden areas. Forbidden area makes you cold a lot faster, but you shouldn't be too scared of it. Different situations might force you to go outside of the safe zone. Learn to be comfortable with this. Just remember to have extra wood or hot coffee consumable. And you'll be okay. Radars. There are maps slash radars inside some of the houses or warehouses. If there is a future looking satellite on top of the building slash house, there will be a radar inside. From radars you get crucial information about other players locations. Use them. Consumables. You have three different consumables which are found in chests or dropped from deer. Medkits. Heals for 150 HP or 25%. Speed drink, unlimited stamina for 15 seconds. And hot coffee that fills your cold meter to 100%, even outside the safe zone. Consumables are important in late game and can even save you in early game situations. Settings, from gameplay options, you should turn off harvest on melee attack. To minimize the risk of accidentally harvesting slash looting something 
when you are trying to swing your opponent. Also, clue auto look at camera is also annoying, so I would advise you to turn it off, but it's all up to you. I dislike it very, very much. Also, side note, you can also turn off V-Sync to increase your FPS cap a lot, depending on your setup. Crafting wheel and your build. Go through everything and choose those perks, tools and powers that fit your playstyle. Remember that you can only choose 3 powers, so choose wisely. Now I'm gonna go through all the powers and you can choose yourself which powers, which 3 powers match your playstyle the best. So, Radar. Exposes nearby players for 15 seconds. This is a great advantage if you have nothing to track with. It's suitable for all builds and goes well for, for players with good aim. Not as useful in duos because there are twice as much tracks and also two people tracking. It is still really good power. Detector, don't mind it, it is going to be removed in the next patch. Invisibility. It turns you invisible for 15 seconds. Good addition to play sneaky game and a great escape tool, especially in bushy areas or where there's a lot of trees. It is not that great against experienced players since you are not completely invisible and experienced players know how to spot players from invincibility. I mean invisibility. Energy shield slash bubble. The bubble makes you invincible for 10 seconds. So basically you can only take damage from cold or you can die from lava. You can also clear areas with traps with the bubble when timed correctly. It is a great choice for all the players. Power leap. Jumps high and far. Affected by momentum. This mobility power is essential for your build no matter how you play. It's great for escaping, it's great for initiating. Arena. 15 seconds of cage for you and your friends and foes inside a medium sized radius. It's a good tool to make yourself a cover when you need armor or fire or if you're just amazing with the axe and you can trap your enemy inside so he can't run away. Great when combined with the bubble or the energy shield. It's usually played by more experienced players. Turret. Well, there's not much to say about the turret. It is a turret that does a bit of extra damage. It also takes attention away from you, so it's good in that way. When well placed, it can be really powerful. Although it only needs one shot or one axe swing to destroy. Ice Bolt. It's powerful crowd control tool, takes away 60% of the target's gold meter and stuns them on their spot for 4 to 6 seconds. It's really good when combined with trap placed under the enemy and snowballs after the Ice Bolt effect ends. You can't harm the enemy when he's under the effect though, so that's kind of bummer, although it would be overpowered, wouldn't it? Shrink! It makes you really small for 15 seconds and traps don't trigger when you run through them. You do a lot less damage when you're under the effect of shrink. Seems like a good way to heal mid fight when you're really small and can hide easily. Nonetheless, there are better bow better powers to do so. I haven't seen anyone to use this power in months. And last but not the least, teleport. It teleports you from 1 to 100 meters directionally wherever you point. It's a good way to escape or initiate a fight. It can teleport through the windows and some other gaps. It's a very useful tool in your build.
To wrap up this video, I'd say that the key skill in this game is to read your opponent's playstyle and pattern while breaking your own pattern to be unreadable and unpredictable. Welcome to the wonderful Darwin community and happy hunting inmate.